Using the word skinny to market products that have fewer calories or are healthier is fat phobic. Skinny pop, skinny cow, with the tape measure tied around the waist. And you could try to change the logo, but it's still fat phobic. I feel like we lost the plot, man. I really feel like we're complaining about stuff that is really irrelevant, man. I mean, how bored do you have to be in your day to sit here and make a TikTok? And you know Samira's sitting. There ain't no way she's standing up. I mean, she barely does that. And complain about mark marketing it, it, the word skinny. Where, where have we gone wrong? Where have we gone wrong, dude? Skinny is really the fat phobic term here, dude? I'm sorry, Samira, but being skinny is actually incentivized in our society. Being fat has almost no value at all. But I guess uh, if you want to be fat, you can totally be fat. But don't bring the rest of us down for wanting to be skinny and showing off the body that we have worked hard for. And by the way, most of those products are lies, okay? Like getting the Skinny Pop popcorn or whatever the fuck, just because it has skinny on it doesn't mean it's actually good for you, okay? That's something I will agree with Samira. Actually, no, I lied. She didn't even say that. She just said it was fat phobic. So she's not even actually going into legitimate reasons why not to eat these products. But you can eat whatever one you want of these. Like it's fine to eat whatever the fuck you want. But also acknowledge that just because something has skinny on it doesn't mean that it's actually good for you. It just... It's just a good marketing thing. It just gets you to look at it. I know a lot of people in my life that go, David, we have to get this this brand of ice cream or this brand of this or this brand of that. And you go, why? It's because, oh, because it's good for you and they don't know why. Why is it good for you? It's just regular popcorn. It, it may be like 10 extra, 10 less calories, I guess. Like it's not made with as much butter as the other or the store brand. Whatever. Eat whatever you want, but don't sit there and try to make it seem like it's better for you because it's got skinny in the title. But that's not even what Samira's saying. She's just saying the word skinny is fat phobic, which is cringe. Uh, <laughs> out of everything you could be doing in a day, you're sitting here making a video about the word skinny being fat phobic. It's just interesting. It's tied around the waist. And you could try to change the logo, but it's still fat phobic. Skinny cow? Oh, oh yeah, they did get rid of it. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of old products. You know, like I got the Aunt Jemima's back there before they got rid of the black lady. Uh, in my opinion, now we don't even have any, we don't have any, we have no inclusion in our day-to-day -day products anymore. We used to have the black lady. Um, I don't know if the Buttersworth is still making that stuff. The Land Lake lady is gone. The Uncle Ben on top of the rice, that's gone. I mean, we're missing out on a lot of minority coverage on a lot of these products. And I really feel like in the process of making things more inclusive, we've made things less inclusive. And it's really sad to see. I mean, they really got rid of the cow on the skinny cow. I didn't even, I, I've never even heard of this product before. So, I mean, I'm not really appalled by it, but let me know down below what you think about the skinny products uh, and, <laughs> and whether or not you think that they're fat phobic. Skinny girl. Egregious. Just egregious. Tell Damn, me she must have really just like Googled <laughs> products with skinny on there and just made this video, I guess. I wonder how many she could name, dude. I didn't know there was this many. It's something that have fewer calories, less sugar. You say make it skinny? Well, it is, yeah. I mean, it's synonymous term. I mean, you're definitely lowering the calories. Therefore, it's a synonymous term to make it less calories is skinny. Yeah, why wouldn't it be that? It's like if somebody's doing like a fat burger. is a big fat fucking burger, dude, a big boy. You know what I'm talking about? If somebody says it's a fat burger or big man or like, you know, fat Joe or something like that, you're not thinking of a guy that's skinny. You know, think of a dude that doesn't have, obviously, if you're calling a guy Fat Joe, that dude's going to have some respiratory issues, 100%. So, yes, uh, Samira, I'm sorry that the word skinny is used in our English language to refer to something that is less calories or smaller. Yes, uh, I don't know why this is like a crazy idea for you. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with Samira. Why does she go off so hard on these videos about literally nothing? Like, Samira, you're really going hard right now, and what you should be going hard on is that diet. Maybe you should be picking up some of these skinny, these king smoothies and skinny smoothies and skinny pop and things such and so forth. I mean, I, I don't even want to know how much money you actually spend on food in a month compared to, I don't know, like it's probably a little bit more. I, I know it's actually more expensive. I literally bought some skinny pop a week ago. I was with somebody and they were like, oh, David, let's buy the skinny pop. And I was like, why? And they're like, oh, it's like cheaper. And I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's actually way healthier. And I was like, why? And they were like, well, I don't know. And I bought it. It was like $3 more than the store brand. And we brought it home. And I swear to God, it tasted exactly the same as regular popcorn. You know why? Because it was regular popcorn. It was like slightly less calories, I guess. But I mean, if I'm paying three extra dollars for maybe 10 less calories, 
it's not worth it, dude. I'd rather get the GMO popcorn or whatever the fuck they're doing to that popcorn to make it like slightly more calories. I don't know. Whatever. I've never been, I'm never one of these people that sits there and goes like, oh yeah, I gotta buy the organics. I gotta make sure I buy the bread with the slightly more protein. I gotta get the the, the bread that's brown and I gotta get the, you know, all this stuff. I'm not, I don't give a fuck about that shit, dude. I, you know, when I grew up, dude, I was eating white bread, okay? White bread. And I was eating hot dogs and I was eating beans out of a fucking can and Chef Boyardee's and other shit like that. I don't care about myself, you know? it is. <laughs> no, I care about myself, but I don't care about myself to, to the degree to buy a three inch reduced cucumber compared to the BBC cucumbers, the double or even triple stack cucumbers that are cheaper and it gives you more food. And I guess it's like a little bit more calories and I guess it's got a little bit more pesticides on it, but like whatever, dude, I've let women pee in my mouth. Like, do I fucking care whether or not this, this cucumber's got a little bit more pesticides compared to the organic one that was grown in some Vietnamese guy's basement? I don't care. No, I'm buying the the non-organic, the big GMO versions of the food. I don't care. I'm dying on this hill, dude. Unless something comes out that tells me like it's actually bad for you, I'm good. I'm eating the GMO ones. Smoothie King, I hope you can now see how people use fat phobia as a marketing tool. Yeah, so what, dude? Like we use marketing tools for like everything. Are you like are you surprised by that? Like there's bullshit being said all the time. Like when you watch Dude, <clears throat> you guys remember a few a few years back, right? When nobody really wanted to go to McDonald's anymore because it was like, oh, mystery meat. We don't know what's in the food. We have no idea what this food is, right? Which never stopped anybody. Like, you're going to McDonald's not to get good food. You're going to McDonald's because something tastes good in your mouth. And you don't care if the Puerto Rican dude behind the counter made that shit for you. It's like, whatever. But anyway, they had like a big marketing campaign. I remember the ads where the guy would go into McDonald's and he would order like a, I think he ordered like a, I don't know, a Big Mac or something. And he literally took the burger, <coughs> right? And he bit into the burger and was like, oh, wow. And the guy across him was like, I know, it's great, isn't it? And he was like, 100% real meat, huh? And the guy was like, yep, 100% real meat. And I remember watching the ad and I was thinking like, why does this even need to be said? Like, can you imagine the thought process of being like, your burger is so incredibly ambiguous. Like the meat is so ambiguous that you have to make an ad to try to justify the existence of this food and convince people that it's actually real meat. Like, what did people think it was before? I wonder. I don't know. But the point I'm making is, yes, there are tons of ads or tons of things that are crazy marketing. Yeah, 100%. It's not about those options having less calories and less sugar. It's the way they're marketed. Okay, so as a fat person who just went to Miami for a couple of days, I had some events. I went to go to support some of my friends in Miami Swim Week. I was a around a lot of like influencers, social media people. These lashes are not it. I know this has nothing to do with the actual video, the context of the video, but I don't know why so many people, when they wear lashes, they clump them together so damn heavily. Like, I can't even see the top part of your eye anymore. That's how thick these lashes are. And I understand that's like, that's what you're going for. But come, can we have like a little bit of consistency? Like that is not reflective of reality. But then again, I guess like there are people out there that do things that are not real. Like people get breast reductions or BBLs and not just women, like men. I've seen multiple guys with like ab implants and I get it. Like go ahead, go off queen. But like that, you know, like, I don't know. It just makes me, it's a little uncanny really beautiful people right it's miami and as a fat person just a quick little psa get your head out of your fucking ass okay so not to sound like i'm holier than thou or i know all but these people were very pretentious a lot of people were really snobby and it's just amazing how these people spend so much money on their looks and their bodies trying to perfect the out you know outside but the inside is so ugly uh, damn bro i mean i'm gonna keep it a buck with you dude um, she's kind of right. She's a little right on this, dude. Just because you're a hottie on the outside doesn't mean you're a hottie on the inside. I've seen this copious amounts of time where you see somebody and you think, whoa, this person is gorgeous. Absolutely the most beautiful person you've ever seen in your life. Then you have a conversation with them and you just kind of like slowly but surely drift away from them because you're like, this person has actually got nothing going on in their head. Or, you know, one of my favorite things is, right? when you date somebody, and let's say you're dating somebody that's like a 10 out of 10, like a very attractive individual. And I've had this experience firsthand where I've dated somebody that was very attractive, super ridiculously ungodly levels of attractive, like so attractive that you would think that this person could not be crafted by the hands of God, that it'd be crafted by somebody else in the defiance of God. And this person would get compliments daily, every time we'd go outside. There'd be people stopping her and going, you are just literally the most gorgeous person I've ever seen in my life. Like, oh my God, you're so beautiful, whatever. And I remember getting compliments. People would tell me, 
oh man, you really got a good one. You really got a good girl. Wow, you really got a beautiful individual. And I always thought that's dumb because this person you think is very beautiful, but like I'm dating this person. Like this person could be like severely ass to me and you're only looking from the outside in and I understand that, but it's more to somebody than just the beauty, right? There's more to somebody than just that because oftentimes I find when you, when something isn't broke, people don't tend to fix the other things. So like if you're getting by and you're a very beautiful individual and you have little ever little to any reason to ever to enhance other qualities of yourself because you already get by with this enough, it to me a lot of times people just kind of drift by their lives like that and it's really sad because there is a lot more to somebody than just the flavor of their skin or the way that their body is formatted. It's cool that you have a lot of hips. It's cool that you have a lot of shape and your face is really contoured and stuff like that. But, you know, what else do you got? You know, like, what are your interests? Tell me about your goals. Like, what have you done in your life? Because it's very easy. Well, look, it's not very easy. But a lot of somebody's intrinsic worth in terms of their physical appearance is not really anything they did. I mean, sure, you can enhance it, you can wear makeup, you can have a skincare routine, you can brush your teeth, you can wear socks, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do. But for the most part, what you have is because of your parents and that run, that RNG, that roll of the dice that puts you out in the way that you did. And uh, I'm, I'm less concerned about that and more concerned about how much of a good person you are and, you know, like what, what other passions do you have in life? Like what can we do together? Like I don't really care for the most part if whether or not somebody looks good. It's cool that you do look good because I'm more attracted to you, maybe, probably, it depends, I guess. But um, when people approached me and said like, bro, you really got a good girl, I always thought like, dude, this person could literally be the most toxic individual in the fucking entire existence. And you saying this to me is terrible. Just terrible, dude. It's cool that you think she's hot, but like, bro, like maybe I think of her as more than just that, you know? I don't know, man. Sometimes I look at that shit, I'm like, there is some truth to it. No communication, no smiles, people staring at the two fat girls going, like, I can't tell you how many people blatantly just were like, I mean, and I'm just like, these people are spending thousands of dollars to be beautiful and they're the ugliest people. Like, you could just tell by their aura. True, but that's no, that's no reason to stay fat. Like, I hear what you're saying, right? I get it. Like, the most beautiful people, deep down, are the ugliest people, sure. But is that a reason to stay ugly physically speaking? Is that a reason to not improve physically speaking? Because you have a great, deep down, amazing, deep down, amazing feelings? Like, no. You obviously still have to improve your physical shape. It's it's just like, to me, just because you have one doesn't mean you can't have the other. You could still increase the mentally, you can still increase the emotionally, whatever, and the physical aspect of your body simultaneously. You don't have to just be a fat girl with a great personality. You could be a thin girl with an amazing personality too. And if you're thinner, you're gonna be way more presentable. You're gonna be way more approachable. You're gonna be way more nicely perceived. People are gonna wanna talk to you more, right? And I know it sucks to say that, because I am inferring that when you're fatter, people don't want to talk to you as much, but it's a fact. Like people just don't want to talk to somebody that's fundamentally suffering on a daily basis. Like it's it's very jarring to be around somebody that's <sighs> huffing and puffing or have sweat stains underneath their third boob area. It's just like, it's not, most people just have a problem with it, okay? So I get what you're saying, I do. Like I agree with you, there are plenty of people out there that look great, but deep down, they're not great people. And sometimes I don't even think that those people look great. They kind of look terrible a lot of times, depending on when you get your plastic surgery and once you get done, a lot of people that get plastic surgery done in their early 20s end up looking 44 for like their entire life. And that's not good when you're 22. And it perpetually, it makes you look like everybody else. Like when I saw Miley Cyrus getting her, um, face reduction or whatever, cheekbones, whatever. Uh, now she looks like 90% of the other women in Hollywood. I don't know why so many people favor plastic surgery in this drastic different way. Like it's fine if you wanna get your teeth replaced, it's fine if you wanna get a hair transplant, like you can do whatever you wanna want, whatever you wanna do, but oftentimes these people go way, really, really far. Lip injections, like through the roof, ginormous like cheek fillers, like that Zac Efron shit, people go really, really far. And I get it, like maybe you're really insecure about yourself, but like I said before, just because you're fat and you have a great personality doesn't mean that you shouldn't get thin too. Like, don't let social media fool you on. Be careful who you follow. That's all I gotta say. So I've seen it circulating around on TikTok that fat phobia isn't real and that you simply just can't be fat phobic. So today I've composed a list of signs that you are indeed fat phobic. Starting off with number one, seeing a fat person and thinking you. Right. Okay. 
Well, listen, dude, sometimes when you see a fat person, you see that grease stain underneath their armpits or you see them go like this. Dude, OK, look, some fat people, not all fat people, you don't have that kind of response. Like if somebody's like 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds over, it's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. A lot of people are really around that weight to begin with. Like when people say I'm fat, that's usually what they're referring to. Somebody that's like 50 pounds or 70 pounds over most of the time. We're not talking about somebody that's 300, 400, 500 pounds. Obviously, if somebody is that weight, Yes, it's disgusting, but it's disgusting in more than just one way. It's not just disgusting in the physical aspect. It's also disgusting in the aspect of like, how the fuck can you live in this world and choose to be in this body? Like you only get one for what we know of, right? And you're literally using this body to the most durability degree in like five years, right? Like you're just draining through your durability because you want to eat food. And that's really sad. And it's really, really tough to look at because that person is literally suffering on a daily basis. I see it. These people are walking back and forth, back and forth. And make no mistake about it, it's an addiction. Regardless of what you want to say, like I hear a lot of people say like, oh, I could never be friends with somebody that's a drug addict. I could never be around people that have all these Ill illnesses, issues with like substance abuse. But you're yet you're around people that are chronically obese. People that eat four, five, six, seven thousand calories a day and you have no problem with that. I understand that one is obviously worse than the other in the sense of like you're seeing the trauma more so, but the fat person, just because you're not seeing that person actively suffering on a daily basis, what are you thinking when they come up to your apartment and you live on the fifth floor and they have to walk up those five flights of stairs by the third one, they're out of breath and they have to take a break. Is that okay with you? Or like, hey bro, um, do you think we could take an Uber three blocks down because it's gonna be really hard for me to walk? Like, what are you thinking in those particular scenarios, dude? It's not a good thing. So yes, there is a case for somebody to say, ew, when somebody is obese, because it's not an attractive thing to be very, very big. Okay. Like you're not beautiful, you're dying, right? Like it's not fat phobic, it's death. You're literally dying. Yeah. Swiftly moving on to number two, believing all fat people do is shove their face with food and sit on their ass all day. Well, listen, okay? I'm gonna keep it a buck at you. Not all fat people are eating 5,000 calories a day. It just depends on the, the person. So if you're a girl and you're like five foot two and you're supposed to only be eating like 1,200 to 1,500 calories, which is pretty much true for most people around that height and gender range and you're eating let's say 2500 calories that's a thousand extra than what you're supposed to eat you're going to gain a lot of weight off of that because you're a small person and hey it's okay that you live a sedentary lifestyle i mean it's not good in the sense of like you know you should be doing more with your with your body but i'm saying it's okay because we live in a society what that pretty much incentivizes that like most jobs are going to have you sitting down which is fine like i'm not shitting on you for that but you should find reasons and ways to move your body optimally so you don't have to sit down all day you have reasons to move you have reasons to do other stuff because when you sit down you're literally burning no calories you're just doing shit you're just like on your keyboard typing away and that burns maybe like two calories an hour like the point i'm making is I don't have a problem with you sitting down on your ass all day. It's like whatever, most Americans sit on their ass all day. And if you're not sitting on your ass all day, you're moving to a place where you are gonna be sitting on your ass all day. And that's okay. Like it is what it is. And don't get me wrong, I know that there are people out there that do have physical intensive jobs. I'm not taking away from those people. But here in America, for the most part, a lot of people are doing jobs that require them to sit down. It is what it is, right? So the 5,000 calories a day is more of like a generalization in the sense of like, I don't think that you're actually eating 5,000 calories a day. At least I hope you're not because that's literally like double what a man should be eating in a day. That's fucking crazy. But I do think you're eating more than what you should be eating, obviously, because you're obese. So obviously you are gaining weight. I don't know how by how by, by how much you might be eating more than a day. And it may not be consistent in the sense of like, I don't think you're eating 2,500 calories every day. You might be eating 1,500 calories one day, 2,500 the next day, 1,500 the next day. But the point I'm making is the net gain is going to be so much to where you're gaining weight so i know you're eating more than what you're supposed to so yes you are fat because you're eating too much right that's true though like in a very general way i don't think you're eating 5,000 plus calories but most definitely most people that are fat are sitting down all day and they are also eating way more than what they need okay i can't number three telling fat people to put on more clothes it just depends on what you mean by putting on more clothes. I would never tell somebody what they can and cannot wear. Well, let me stop, dude. I've had multiple moments in my life where I've told my friends to get rid of their flip-flops, get rid of their Crocs, get rid of this and that. 
Um, it's just not appropriate, dude. Crocs are disgusting. Flip flops are gross. I don't want to see your toes. They're disgusting. I know you don't clip your toenails. Like I know some guys that have literally not clipped their toenails in four months. I'm not even joking what you did. Like they could probably have like the Guinness World Record of guys that have like never washed their feet and clipped their toenails. You know, like it, that these guys always do that shit. But regardless, uh, I say that because I just clipped my toenails last night, so I really take care of myself. But even before that, it's been like three weeks. Like, what do I do, man? I wear socks all day. What the fuck? Nobody's looking at my feet. Nobody, and I'm not sending feet pictures either. Like, I've never been with somebody before that asked me for my feet pictures to purposely beat off to. I've never had that. So I don't really have a reason to like really take care of my feet. But when it comes to telling people to put my clothes on, when you see a fat person outside and they're wearing a crop top or a very revealing set of clothing items, uh, it's sometimes I'm seeing way too much, dude. I'm seeing folds, I'm seeing girth, I'm seeing a whole bunch of things that I feel like my eyes should never want to see. And it's a little concerning for me sometimes when I see somebody and, uh, you know, they take a step and like 20 seconds later, their leg still moves from that one step because of the recoil from that one step. That's really, really uncomfortable to view. And, you know, if you want to wear whatever you want to wear, that's fine. But, uh, dude, I'm going to have some reactions to that shit if I see it. Look. If it fits them, they can wear it. True. If they want to. It just depends on what you mean. Like, if they want to, sure. Wear whatever you want within the limitations of the law. Don't go walking around with your dick swinging out. I don't want to see dick or vagina. They can wear it. If they're comfortable in it, they can wear it. Sure. Or does that not make sense to some of you? Go ahead. Wear whatever you want, dude. Hashtag slay queen edges. Wear what you want, queen. Number four. Being a grown adult weighing 150 pounds or less. And still believing you need to lose weight 10 20 whatever pounds please evaluate and please see a doctor that's mm, terrible that's terrible advice you know how many women that i know that are 150 or 160 that would be considered fat a lot because they're shorter people i knew a girl that was like 411 she was a small little mexican girl and dude, she weighed like 150 pounds and she was fat and she wanted to get down to like 110 or 120 so she can get into these like skinny jeans or some shit. I don't fucking know. But if you weigh 150, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I weigh around 150 right now, right? A lot of people that are men can weigh 150 and be fine. Same thing with women, right? Women tend to weigh a little bit less. And I feel like we have like a very skewed idea of what, how much people are supposed to weigh in today's world because we just kind of like are okay with people being obese so if somebody says they weigh 150 pounds it's like 150 pounds is like crazy for a lot of people because like a lot of people weigh more than 200 so uh 150 is crazy but yeah dude i know girls that were at 150 that looked worse uh at 150 than they did at 130 and when they got down to 130 they were muscle bound they had tons and tons of definition they were in shape they looked great and at 150 they sure they look they look fine but when they went down to 130, they looked even better and they were healthier and they had more anabolic, they had more anabolic usages and they, they were more defined and that's what they wanted to do. There's nothing wrong with losing weight at that weight if it's healthy for you to do so. So I don't know about that. I don't know about see a doctor. It seems kind of weird that you would say see a doctor given the fact that you're obese and you're not doing anything about that and you're not seeing a doctor. That seems pretty weird. Projecting. Please. And number five. Telling fat people that are confident in their bodies and encourage others to do so to stop promoting obesity. Yeah, I see like if you want to make videos online and you want to be fat and you want to like make clothing hauls or sheen hauls or you know fit checks and whatever the fuck and you're just doing that and somebody says stop promoting obesity. It's a little cringe. Um, do whatever the fuck you want as long as it's in TOS. It's okay. And if you feel bad about it, you feel bad about it. I mean, a lot of these people do project insecurity. They'll sit there and say that they're beautiful and amazing and whatever, but behind the scenes, you know they're crying themselves to sleep and they're trying to find ways to cope with the fact that they're very unhealthy. It is what it is, but I don't think that people should just be going up to them like, oh, you're promoting obesity. Bro, what are you fucking talking about, dude? Shut the fuck up. No, you're fine. You, you go ahead and do whatever the fuck you wanna do, but I think it's really weird though um that in a way you are you are promoting obesity you're making it seem like it's okay or it's all right um but in a very very like passive way like i'm not gonna hate on you for that it'd be different if like big companies were making superheroes that were like four five hundred six hundred pounds and they were as active as like another person would be that was also the same superhero like in that case it might be a little bit more of an issue but for the most part i don't think that people just being fat is encouraging obesity you're good Okay. Not everybody needs to be a role model, right? Like not everybody, if you just live like a basic life and you just want to like go to work, take care of your family, make food, whatever the fuck, um, and you want to be fat, like dude, fucking whatever, dude. Like that's fine. I don't give a fuck, dude, whatever. Now, 
I don't know about you. But I feel 22. But to me, that's promoting self-confidence. It just depends on what you mean, dude. Like, you're not promoting self-confidence if you're fat as fuck and you're just posting videos online. I don't, I would never say that shit. What, what, how does that even make sense? It's like me saying like, I'm promoting wearing hats because I'm wearing a hat online. No the fuck I'm not, I'm just wearing a hat. Like it, not everything needs to be so incredibly like, oh man, you're doing the, no bro. Most people are just doing shit because they wanna do that shit and it doesn't need to be more than that. And self-love. And Whenever somebody says self-love, I'm thinking about beating off. Am I wrong? Are you not thinking about that? I think about that. I believe everybody deserves that. It just, if you believe everybody deserves self-love, I'm not going to call it out, but that's a very stupid idea. So, um, yeah. Cool. And of course, number six, being afraid of ever becoming fat. <laughs> this one is actually the worst one though, because of course there should be some fear of being fat because anybody can be fat. And when you're fat, it's literally life-threatening. There is literally no reason to be fat. There is only consequences. And there might be like some niche scenario where being fat is like helpful, where you're like stuck in a desert island somewhere and you're gonna be rescued in a week and maybe that fat reserve is gonna like hold you over. But in most times and scenarios, it's not good to be fat. So I can't really say that there's really any benefit to it, especially living in society. So yeah, no, definitely. I don't want to be fat. It's literally nothing but health complications and living my life on hard mode perpetually. Nah, I'm good. I don't want to be fat. So whatever you have to say about this, I automatically disagree with it, but I'm willing to listen. <laughs> Scared, terrified, frightened that you'll ever become overweight. Just because you accepted it doesn't mean I have to. Like just because this is a part of your life and you've realized that you can't do anything about it and like that's okay for you, you can do that. But for me, nah. I'm good. I don't want to be fat. I'm I. Thick, voluptuous. Well, thick and voluptuous kind of different, dude. I mean, that's a little something extra on the side. You're not fat if you're thick. I, I, I got to keep it a buck. I'm sick of these terminologies all just be morphed together like they're all synonymous. They're not synonymous. Stop putting them together. Sexy, some might say. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that. Sexy? Mm, maybe to a blind person. Is a telltale sign. You are fat phobic. True. Thank you. I'm fat phobic, guys. I, I gotta come out right now. I am fat phobic. I don't want to gain more weight. I don't want to be fat. I'm fat phobic. I'm fat phobic. I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm coming out. Not like that, though. Video went viral on TikTok last week, and this is what I learned. Fat phobia is the only form of discrimination that people don't have any protections against. My entire video was about ending generational trauma when it comes to passing down anti-fat bias. As you can imagine, I received a plethora of very fat phobic comments from people who believe wrongly that being fat is morally wrong. You can totally be fat if you want to. Like, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Like, if you want to be fat, you could be fat. But when you say like it's a moral failing, I just want to know what you mean by that. Because if you don't have your morals centered in that, like if you don't give a fuck about your body or taking care of yourself in a very fundamental or general way, then it's fine. Like go ahead. But for most people, it is a moral failing. You're literally taking what whatever deity bestowed upon you, your body or like, you know, whatever, and you're destroying it for the pleasure of eating food more often than somebody that doesn't eat that much food. That's literally it. And I get that it might not be good for you, but for most people, it's not a good thing. Like there's nothing intrinsically valuable about being overweight. It's actually really easy. It's actually like no effort. You can just go down to the grocery store and just buy whatever you want, just eat it all the time. And I understand like you might think there's some kind of like, what'd she say? Like uh, generational trauma about being fat? What the fuck are you talking about? What? Because your grandmother told you that being fat wasn't good, somehow that's like generational trauma? What the fuck are you talking about? What? When I tried to report these comments for harassment, bullying, just I would love to see the comments, dude. Because if it's somebody like, hey, um, just to let you know being fat is not good, it's actually actively unhealthy, and you go to report that for like bullying or discrimination, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, is that not correct information? That's like somebody bullying somebody and going, hey, um, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, this person, like, in my comment section said that light was really bright, and I'm just trying to, like, report them for discrimination. Like, what the fuck do you think is gonna happen, dude? Like, that's such a fucking... Yeah, you know, you know the reason why they didn't get deleted or, like, reported for anything? Is because it's true. If somebody's fat. Like, so, if, if that's the comments, which is, which is where I'm thinking these comments were, because most of the time these people are doing that shit because it's just some basic, general, basic bitch, like, oh, yeah, being fat is actually not good, bro. Hashtag lose weight. And then those people would, like, these people, I guess, get super triggered by that. And then TikTok can't really do shit about it because it's within TOS to tell people that it's unhealthy. What the fuck do you want? Discrimination. What I received was a description of what is reportable. True. We are protected for the following things. And it's also really interesting that you would say, like, oh, yeah, being fat phobic is the only disability that's not, or, like, the only, uh minority class that's not protected what are you even talking about dude like we literally not only do we protect it dude we encourage it we live in a society where it's like we have advertisements and like entire corporations that are totally fine with you being fat and actively want you to be fat we have entire genres of modeling communities that are designed for people to be fat like what the fuck are you talking about dude in what way is that shit not fucking protected what are you talking about dude like what are you saying people get canceled for calling somebody some fucking fat what are you talking about bro in what way? Just because you just because you got a couple comments on TikTok that said it was not good to be fat, suddenly like this entire community is not protected. What are you fucking talking about, dude? The size of our bodies is not protected. In what way, dude? Hate speech involves hateful behavior. So if somebody just says like, hey, dude, yeah, being fat is not good. Hashtag lose weight. That's not hate speech or hateful behavior. Contains content content that attacks, threatens, or incites violence against dehumanized persons or group because of their protected attributes, race, ethnicity, nationality, origins, re re religion, caste, sexual orientation, sex, gender, sex, gender, gender identity, serious disease, disability, and immigration status. Yeah, so I guess fatness is not in there, but you could probably throw it into like disability, I guess. Um, content that is clearly hostile towards another person because of the above protected yeah dude um what what do you want dude it's not good to be fat it's not healthy to be fat i get it it hurts you it triggers you but it's not good what do you want like what the fuck dude that's like somebody saying like yeah sucking dick is gay and you report them because it's not gay it's gay it is still okay it is still acceptable to be hateful toward people for the size of their bodies only on these apps, dude. Like, have you ever been in the real world? Like, you know that people don't give a fuck about you, right? Like, people will just say things to you on the street sometimes, you know? Like, I remember one time I was with a girl, and some guy just screamed out of his window, Hey, bitch, you so bad, I want to suck the dick of the last guy that fucked you. That's disrespectful. I mean, it's kind of nice in a way, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, people just say things. People will say mean, disgusting, terrible, awful things to you, and... You have to be tolerant as a human being. And also, you got to understand, being in a position where you have a community online, you have to be extra tolerant because online is going to be the place where people are going to say the most hurtful shit, right? These people have anonymity beside, on their side for the most part. Not on all platforms, like depending on where you are. But the point I'm making is people are more likely to say something disrespectful online than they would have on the street. So... You should be extra tolerant. You should be extra durable. You should know that if you're going to have this particular type of uh, environment that you're creating, there's going to be some pushback. There's going to be some people that are going to say some things to you. So that's why you should be like really, really secure in whatever beliefs that you have. Because otherwise, if you're questioning this shit or you have to report comments because somebody told you that you're fat, then you probably really don't find the, the beliefs that you do as secure as you think you do. Even though... We have more understanding now than ever. Of what? Being overweight is not good. What the fuck? Yes, you're right. Being today, as of today, yes, it is very true that being overweight is not good. How much has changed? I don't fucking know. We have more studies that tell us bodies come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah, bro, but that's such a fucking, that's such a cop out, dude. Yes, bodies come in different shapes and sizes, but when somebody's 350 and you're sitting there going, oh, all bodies come in different shapes and sizes, suck me off. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? What does that have to do with any of that? What? Bro, if somebody's like six foot four and you're telling me that's equivalent to somebody that's 450, what are you talking about? How do you even try to, how do you even try to remedy those two things? How do you try to connect that stuff together like that? What? 
Those two are not even anywhere close to being synonymous. You t genetics determine that guy to be six foot four. You're not the fact that he body slammed 8,000 calories a day, dude. You have to do really something really extreme to be anywhere around that weight. What are you talking about? No, being fat phobic, refusing to do the work. And You're refusing to do the work. You do no work. You just sit down and eat. What are you talking about? And unpack and unlearn that is totally protected. We need to do better. I've put together a webinar this Wednesday, March 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk all about these kinds of things. What gives you the right to talk about this shit? Like, what insight do you have that's going to give people the motivation to stay fat or, like, unlearn fat phobia? What the fuck are we going to do in that seminar, dude? What are you going to sit down, eat ramen for 45 minutes and end it? What the fuck are we doing in the seminar? Do the this work. shit sounds boring as fuck, dude. Like, it's just a Zoom meeting of a whole bunch of fat people sitting together. All you hear on the microphone is... <gasps> Hold up and cr fucking chairs creaking, dude. Somebody falling over on the floor, telling them they can't get up anymore. Zoom calls ending. I don't know what the fuck is going on. What is going on? Work that needs to be done by everyone. My, my bad. I just spilled some chocolate on my microphone. Hold up. It has to start somewhere and it has to start with us. Whatever, so find dude. the link in my bio. Read more. Sign up. Sign True. The hero we need, not the one we deserve. Good to see you there. Let me tell you one thing. The majority of this weird little society that we live in, they're fat phobic. Yes, yes they are. Yes. Yes, they are. True. Which is why- Because stairs exist. Because we want you to be healthy. Because we incentivize health. Because we want people to be productive members of society. And in order to be productive members of society, you need some type of health. Yes. Oh, who would have known? By so many people get in an argument, the first thing they're going to say is, you're fat. They're like, you're fat. <laughs> Where are your eyebrows at? What happened? They think they're eating, you know, but literally you're just exposing yourself, dummy. But it's so normalized, like people just ignore it. They're going to be like, oh, well, you know, like, I don't think it's being fat phobic. It was just a joke, True. right? It was just a joke. I was just angry, True. right? Another example, calling someone big back. This whole trend is just rooted in fat phobia, and I don't think people realize it because they're too busy trying to stuff their t-shirts. You fucking duh, bro. It's supposed to be a joke. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to call you out in a very hilarious in a comedic way yes big backed yes big backed you are big backed right because the the, the joke is that it's people that are big backed because it, it's more you have a lot of back right we know that very wide very very thick not with muscle but with ginormous levels of fat tissue it's supposed to be a joke and i get that you're not looking at it as a joke because you don't determine being fat as a joke but most people do and i get that you consider that to be fat phobic but like dude it's called a fucking joke okay like you know make themselves look bigger but they don't they clearly don't see that this is very offensive to the plus size community yeah but why should i care though like what why could you just tell me why i should care so heavily about that though like what is the reason that i have to give in order for these people to like i have to appease these people i don't understand like what is it why should i have to take away my language or have jokes or sense of humor because you guys are offended by something you guys are going to be offended by stuff regardless of whether or not i do it in your way or not so i might as well just continue doing what i want to do and ensure that i'm living my best life in the same way that you guys live your best life right best life but you can't be mad at me for that you can't be mad at other people for that it's literally you should be actually celebrating that. Like, you should be telling people, like, this is great. Oh, my God, freedom of speech. It's so great that you have the ability to say what you want to say. Like, all right, I guess not. I guess these people are totally, like, anti-speech, anti I guess. They don't understand it. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, most people are not going to care. Nobody owes you understanding. Nobody owes you understanding. But they're going to pass it off as a joke. And yes. then when people who are uncomfortable with this speak up on it you you, you you get called out on it because you're like what the fuck are you talking about bro stop being so big back stop being such a big back guys are gonna try to silence them by saying well it was a joke true it was a joke true like it's dumb like it's yes this whole this whole comment stream is dumb you're the everything that you're saying is stupid beyond belief i don't even understand why you made this video bro you just did somebody say this to you are you like are you internalizing this right now? Did something happen, dude? Who hurt you? Let me find out. Let me find out what happened, dude. Somebody called you big backed and you got offended and you were like, well, that actually hurts me. And that person was like, like I care. Who asked? Huh. Who asked? Is that what happened, dude? Let me fucking find out, bro. All right, guys, that's the end of today's video. So if you liked today's video, I appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety, leave, leave it down below by typing in water water this is my preferred water brand is poland spring i don't know what you have where you live 
this just basic bitch water that you can get here. So that's my favorite. But uh, leave it down below, water. And speaking of water, you are just so hydrated today. Absolutely hydrated. The most hydrated that I can I didn't even know it was possible to be as hydrated that you are. Uh, without being a fish. I didn't know that, but you are very hydrated, very luscious, very delicious, very beautiful, very amazing in so many different dynamic ways. And I appreciate that about you. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff will be listed down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.